Hail, hail, and welcome to Paradise Report number 7. It's a brand new season and a brand new start. Not only do we have our first ever league season with the Rangers to look forward to, but I'm now freelance after a season and a half of appearing on the Lost Boys podcast. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank Chris for getting me to this stage, and I'm sure the three amigos will do fine without me. We're all here on Hell Hell Media anyway, so it's all good. Coming up on this podcast, it's pre-season friendly time for both the team and myself. I ease myself back into recording with a two-day trip to Fur Hill to watch the development squad before returning to Paradise for the first team's friendly with Norwich City. The development squad recording's a bit of a tester, I must admit. The atmosphere across the two days is a bit flat, and my knowledge of the teams is a bit shaky. But it's worth a go, and maybe I'll go along to some more of our youth squad fixtures this season. Anyway, here it is, hope you enjoy it. Hello, hello. It's been a long summer. I was there watching a break for the football, given all the shenanigans that were going on across the city, trying to decide what happens after their team died. But finally, we're just about resolved, at least apparently resolved, we can get back to the football itself, the events on the park. Now, unfortunately, I can't afford to go to Amsterdam, so I'm no way the first team today. I am at Fur Hill instead. And I'm here to watch our development squad take on Partick Thistle. And since I've got a weekend pass, I'll be back tomorrow to see them play whoever they play, depending on the winners and losers today. Because there's a second game today between an Everton development squad and Airdrie United. But more on that later. Right then, here comes the hard bat, because I don't know the team as well as uh, people like the, your video sales blog. <laughs> we have Thompson and Goal. A back four of Lewis Toshney, Marcus Fraser, another Thompson who might be Josh, because I'm sure he's still in our books. And Andre Blackman completes the back four. In midfield we have Rabbi Ibrahim. Uh, we've also got Philip Twardzik. Callum McGregor. And no doubt Captain Jackson Irvin as well. Up front we have Tony Watt and Morton Rasmussen. They're the name I've not heard in a while. On the bench we have Atai, Fisher, Barrowman, Ede and Daniels. And unfortunately I don't know any of them. I'm looking forward to seeing what the, the reserve squad has got. I'm hoping this is a, a start or something good for these boys. Cause it's nice to see a few of them breaking into the first team next season. Or over the course of the next season properly. You know, just the sort of fleeting appearances he got last season, like Marcus Fraser in uh, Europe and Tony Watt and Motherwell. And... But that's up to them, they need to show what they're up to. Um, might not be the last time I'm for her either, because apparently we're going to be playing the, the under 20 league here. And hopefully the kickoff times are going to be such that I can get to a few of the games. I think the, the next gen series is also going to be played here, and that was quite successful last season. So. This could be the first of many trips to Fur Hill today. It's certainly the first of two trips this weekend. <laughs> right, we're ready to go. The teams are coming out now. The first game of two today. Partey Thistle versus Celtic. Not exactly a great crowd here, but it is only a pre-season final. Decent enough. Celtic turned out. Reasonable part of the Thistle turned out. Lots of empty spaces. Should have been filling this place when it comes time to kick off proper level. That is actually Josh Thompson. That's right. Nice to know. Right, it's the time for a huddle. I said they were shooting into the big grassy bit behind the other goal in <laughs> the first half. I remember it used to be a terrace. <laughs> Let's get cracking. OK, first correction in the new season. It's not Philip Twardzik, it's Patrick Twardzik, his twin brother. I read the Twitter as P Twardzik and thought Philip. Of course it's spelled with an F, isn't it? Not to worry. <laughs> I did say I didn't know these guys that well. Good turn, get Tony Watt in behind there. He's uh, pulled his shot just wide. That's the first decent judge of the game. 
The defence is looking quite solid at the moment. Hand on everything this one thrown at us. Style in the game though. Interesting to know that we're wearing white socks today, which is uh, unusual this season. Mainly because part of us are wearing a dark away kit. Which is dark socks. That's today's fashion tips. <laughs> This will just starting to get a better in the game at the moment. Passing pretty crisp. Uh, we're not really keeping possession that well. But still nothing to really trouble our goalkeeper yet, but we're starting to get him behind. Nasty head clash between two players. One of those you can see it coming. And it looks a horrible one. Best team. Beth are getting treatment. It's worse to Ashley for us. I don't know how it's for them. Hopefully they'll be alright, but very sore one. Still nothing each after half an hour though, so we've had a couple more moves that have broken down before we get anywhere near the goal. Just lacking a bit of sharpness at the moment. This is pre-season for the reserves just as much as it's pre-season for the first team, so these things happen at this stage of the season. So the outcome of that was a part of this was substitution when the guy got off holding the ice pack to his face with the looks of it. I think he got the, the rang end. Because meanwhile, West Austin is getting bandaged up. So I'm assuming that having a back of the head. It's kind of where he was holding his ice pack. So he'll be coming back home when he's bandaged up. Meanwhile, if this will play on 11 against 10. And that is one out of party thistle. Free kick, you can see the out near the corner flag. Cross came in, simple header in the corner. And with 35 minutes gone, this will take the lead in our tournament. And we are back up to 11, by the way. Can't really blame that. Maybe should have been a set and get in behind again. Well shut down with the goalkeeper and one of the defenders. It broke to another Thistle player with the keeper out of place and he poised it over the bar. And got the appropriate Sibo chant. Sibo's legend is going to live on much longer than he ever played in Scottish football. And finally, a decent Celtic chance. Keep had to touch it over a bar, so we've got a corner on it. So, well held up by his missing. Waited for the support. Played it. Shot for just outside the box. I don't know, see what he's missing unfortunately, so it's difficult to tell how he's come on since the last time I've seen him. Ball hasn't been up by end of the park enough. Connor doesn't want to come in, unfortunately. Can't be too long left in this half. <laughs> Bit of controversy here. Thizzle have got a free kick at the edge of the box for who knows what. Josh Thompson didn't seem to know. He looks clearly a long ball against this one. As you can tell, a few of the Celtic fans aren't too happy about it. Good three kick, good punch for the keep up. Second attempt comes in. Celtic defence can get it clear. And don't. Too busy playing around at the back. Most the ball again. It's a bit of that going on today, we're not really keeping the ball well. Thistle have sort of been better at that today. As they come again. And that's half time. Kind of a wee bit of improvement at the Celtic in the second half if we're going to turn this game round. But we'll see. It does appear like this or a wee bit sharp on us. Just overall, so. Oh, we're getting the, the sharpness back. <laughs> Tell you, two teams are back over the second half. We're ready to go again. Apparently, uh, a couple of the subs were changed. It's Joe Chalmers and Paul Swain on the bench. And no... ED and... Another one. Missed that and thought earlier. Hopefully as the season goes on I'll get to know a few of these players because I'll get along to more of these games. Celtic went better in the second half already. Creating a couple of chances. 
really should have hit the target with a, well, the second one, but it was blazed into the stand right over my head. Still a bit more promising. And despite the good start, it's now 2-0 to Thistle. An unfortunate slip at the edge of the box as the ball was played uh, across the 18 yard line. Fell straight to a Thistle player, curled it in the top corner. Good finish. Uphill struggle now. Hopefully the heads don't go down because that's a disappointing time to concede a goal, but keep your heads up. Maybe get a quick goal back, still plenty of time to go. Couple of subs for Celtic. Lewis Tosh is away off. And I never noticed the else was going off. <laughs> I think Tosh was uh, probably need to go off because he's not really been the same since he got that head knock. No, that confident after he came back on his bandage. So not surprised he's away off. Lewis Tosh came on. Let's try that again. Swain and Fisher have come on for Toshney and Twardzik. And Thistle have got a corner which we get clear. I think it pretty much we upped our game a bit and then so did Thistle. And that's pretty much why they're doing all up now. Thistle are commanding this game, shall we say. Getting a few subs now. Thistle making a couple. Uh, one of the guys was done getting treatment for another head knock. It was a decent cross in by. I think it was Watt put the cross in for Rasmussen. Oh, the defender got out of the way, banged his head off Rasmussen and needed a bit of treatment. But he looks to be okay, so he's getting ready to come on. The subs are a wee bit disruptive at the moment, but I'll say it's pre season, these things happen. Well, Celtic sub, Atayic has come on for Ibrahim, so. Get my first glimpse of him. Abraham wasn't exactly great today, I don't think. You know, kept getting caught in possession. Nothing like what I'd seen against the uh, Hearts. <laughs> Hooper nicked a goal off him. <laughs> and he kept flagged for offside. Ah, the joys of SFL football. We've now got a substitution just came on for Partick Thistle with no number on his back. They don't need one. <laughs> just looks weird. Here's a chance for Celtic now. We've got a free kick just outside the D. Uh, there's Missing. He's over up. Tony Watch is backing away from it. There's Missing leaves it. It's going to be one of the, the two younger boys. Decent free kick was in with a corner. Came on, dived across to catch up. Good take with both hands. Just to compound the confusion now, we've got two party thistle players on the park with no number on their back. We would have just ran out of numbers. It's been quite a few subs, right enough. But it just seems very odd. <laughs> so we've got guy in the back with no number and guy in midfield with no number. And no name because I've no idea. <laughs> Another one for the referee. Clear horn ball for a head off the Celtic. It was a goal bound header to be fair. Probably know enough pace on it to beat the keeper, but never got that far because a hand from a thistle defender going away. Left I've ever seen it. Another Celtic sub. I think it's Chalmers on for Blackman. Tano years knows that was great, so I can hardly hear what they're saying. And oh, that's full time. First of one, 2 0. I'll play tomorrow's second game against the winner of today's second game. Whereas we are going to play the loser of today's second game at ah, noon. And that seems to be the cue for Mason Celtic fans to get home. I know that, and I'm going to stay here and watch the second game, which is between Everton and Eldry. That is about an hour before that kicks off. Long day if you're 
Steve about the games. Good morning from Fur Hill again. It's day two of the R Crabe tournament here. Uh, yesterday's winners, Partick Thistle and Everton, uh, development squad, shall we call them? Shall be playing later on today. But to start with, we have Celtic's development squad taking on Airdrie United in the third place match. Kick offs in about half an hour, so the team news is in. We have a team of Thompson and Goal, it's Robbie Thompson. Uh, a back four of Fisher, Marcus Fraser, Josh Thompson, Joe Chalmers, Redfield of Atayic, Callum McGregor, Philip Twardzik, Jackson Irvin, and a front two again of Tony Watt and Martin Rasmussen. Although yesterday that was more of a Rasmussen point up front himself, Watt point out wide. The subs are listed as Ede, Daniels, Madden and Barman. So, seems to have only four subs. Um, seems a bit odd. Uh, I'm guessing Lewis Toshny still hasn't recovered for that head knock he got yesterday. Probably best not to risk him. Uh, as I, unfortunately, I never got to hang about for the game yesterday. I had to rush off due to work commitments. Uh, I should be here for both days, games today, so I don't know what we'll get with Airdrie today. They did lose 2-1, the one was a penalty. So, hopefully, it'd be nice to see Celtic score some goals today, especially since uh, the first team we got for now in Amsterdam. So, I haven't watched two games yesterday and then see Celtic score. And they still something to cheer today. Curiously, the Airdrie team have come out on their own first. We're still waiting on the officials in the Celtic team, but they're already out of the pitch now. Must have got bored waiting in the tunnel or something. Heard the name Paul, Paul DiGiacomo mentioned, he's playing for the other, he's just remember having the Kamarlock days. Don't know if he's any good anymore, but... It's not always one SPL quality player in the department. Oh. Well, it's still SPL quality, we'll see. Uh, finally here comes the Celtic team now. We're in the, the old black kit today. First since I've had to see that up close. Other than the one I bought myself, obviously. Can't really see that it's black and grey hooks. Just looks all black to this distance. Alright, Marcus Fraser appears to be captain today. And he's about to lead us in a huddle. And that's the huddle done, that's the quietest huddle I've ever heard. Alright, <laughs> uh, ready to go, Celtic kick off, let's get cracking. And that's one out of Celtic. A terrific run by Tony Watt in the left wing. Eventually cutting it in the box, cutting it back from Patrick Dordzik to fire into the top corner. That was all Tony Watt, that one. Well, Celtic have started a, better, a lot better than they, than they did yesterday, but we've just had a, a, an excellent chance for Airdrie to equalise. Ball came across, unmarked at the back post, good initial save, but it dropped another Airdrie guy who was about seven yards out and he blazed it over the bar. Missed an empty net. Shocking. Some nice football gets what a chance, but he uh, cracks the sort of junction of the crossbar on the post. And, Unfortunately, it's the wrong side of it, so it's not one now, but good build up play and getting us into that position, especially between Rasmussen and Watt himself. It was a kind of nice one, too, between them. But, uh, definitely more encouraging signs today than there was yesterday. I don't think they're quite as good as Partick Thistle, mind you. And we've reached half time, still one not Celtic, we are pretty much on top of the game, but. Oh, well, they are kind of snatching a couple of chances throughout the half. I think the biggest problem is they cannot handle Tony Watt. Every time he's been down one of the channels, and he's done it a few times, he's been pulled back or trapped or something else, and they keep giving free kicks away. They're able to handle the free kicks better than they're able to handle Tony. Which is probably why they're getting him in the dinner. Obviously, the referee's bringing out cards in this tournament, so that probably doesn't really stop them doing it. You know, they can get away with it. However, see if we can maybe get a. On one or two of these free kicks in the second half. 
Der Weg steht nicht. So far so gut. Once again, the elderly right before Celtic. Celtic team just coming out now. The elderly been out for about a minute or two already. Just keep them waiting. Celtic shooting into the end of man now. So, a couple of goals will be nice today. Another lovely bit of play there. Once again, involving Tony Watt. He cut it across the face of goal. To the one guy who was at the back post. But a vital block at the last second for any other defender managed to keep it out. So it's a corner now. We started the second half, basically, we started the first half. Pretty much in control of the game. Tempo's up a bit. What was it for trying to get that second goal? I don't know if I've made much of a set of pieces so far, so we'll see how this goes. The great ball in. It's well cleared again. What takes on his man? And beats him, cuts it about across. Oh, no, glancing head off, just flashes past the post. The other made a substitution. I think it's the jack of what's going off. I don't want to see much of him today, so I don't know if he's probably past his best. Uh, we've also made a sub. Josh Thompson's away off. Jackson Ovens dropped into the back, and our number 14's on. Unfortunately, I don't know who that is. And once again, there's another elderly player on a bit with a number on his back. But he's ginger, so <laughs> he's easy to spot. You can just imagine the ref writing, ginger guy, in his book if he needs to do it. Actually, Jackson Irvin isn't in the, the back four, he's still in the midfield, a number 15 at the back, because Martin Rasmussen's went off as well. So Twardzik's playing pretty much up front with Watney. Still 4-4-2. Well, the water's one of those strikers that likes to peel out wide. A couple of good saves for Robbie Thompson the last minute or so. Cross came in and he managed to punch it away and then the corner came across and header came in. Another good save and cleared by the defence once again. So This game's not finished yet. Here they're starting to create a couple of changes. And that is a crucial second goal. And yet again, Tony Watts the one to create it. Uh, it was a word in the wing again. He managed to get in behind the air of the defence. Took a shot himself, which was tight to keep a parry to it. Looked like it wasn't quite, going to quite break to Carl McGregor, but it did eventually. And the keeper is not happy about that at all. <laughs> McGregor fired it over the net. I think he's a bit miffed, the keeper. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think he's just about to get half, I know, because they've got a sub keeper ready to get on. Oh well, tough. That is indeed Kenny Arthur's last uh, action of the game. Is to throw a bottle of water in disgust. <laughs> I wonder if that's the same Kenny Arthur used to play for Party Thistle. Oh, hang on, seems to be some debate as to whether he's going on or off or what. <coughs> oh, stay back on. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Go on, we want a half a line and then he's done. Oh, back again. I don't believe Edie's just came on for the tie as well. So, it's another sub for us. Ah, oh, that's 3 0 to Celtic now. A terrific cross by Joe Chalmers. All the way in uh, pretty deep, actually, for uh, Mr. Edie, I believe. His header across goal. Totally caught Arthur out of position and finished in the far side of the net for himself. So, excellent header. A whack cross for Chalmers. Okay, I've got it now. It's Ross Madden that's at the back of Marcus Fraser. It's Mark Barrowman that went out the midfield when uh, Rasmussen went off. And it's Glenn Eady that just scored the third goal. And apparently it's Glenn Eady's debut, so, not bad. Somebody even said it was his first touch that header. Even better. There's about five, ten minutes left. So, you can't be far off. Winning this game now. I think it's just see it the last few minutes. We'll be finishing the third today. And then we can move on to the, the final between Bardic Thistle and Everton. 
I think overall the the Celtic development squad can be a lot happier with the work today than they were yesterday. Pretty much bossed this game through. They have had their one or two chances, but never anything too serious. A couple of saves for Robbie Thompson, and that's been a bad. And it's 4 0 as Elton now. Tony Lock getting in the score sheet finally. It's a good ball played through to him. Picked it up, rounded the keeper, fired it in the net. Can't be all left now. Oh, that was superb. Another ball got in behind Tony Watt, chipped Kenny Arthur, but the number 15 for there, they got back and cleared it off the line. I want to say John Terry style, but John Terry never cleared that off the line, it was behind it. That one looks as if he'd got it just in time. Crack clearance. Credit where it's due. And ah, there's a full time whistle, Celtic run out 4 0 winners against Airdrie United and finished third in the R Crabe tournament. So it's now 55 minutes until kick off of the, the final of the tournament. And I think the Everton team have just been stand, uh, sitting in the main stand watching that game today, so it's a shame we won't see Celtic playing against them, but I think we've seen enough of the Celtic to see that you put a reserve team in the SFL, you know. <laughs> and we do pretty well, but it looks up. Anyway, it was entertaining. Let's hope the second game is just as entertaining. Since we sat watching it, it's in neutral. Right, we'll just be ready to go for game two. You forgive me if I don't know anybody's name. That is Patrick Thistle against Everton 11. Patrick Thistle are out already and they're changed kit again. Uh, we'll just wait and Everton look at it as well. Right, here we go, Everton Taylor out now. It's a couple of minutes as uh, Thistle team come out. So. Seems to have happened in both games, Odo. They're in their old boy kit. Bit of uh, mixed feelings when it comes to their coaching stuff. On the one hand, they get getting real. On the other hand, they've got Alan Stubbs. I've seen uh, both of them standing talking to Jackie McNamara earlier, obviously. Stubbs here was one of the members of the team that stopped the 10, along with both Jackie and Simon Donnelly. They were part of the Thistle today. Uh, and obviously, Debbie Muir will know Jackie from. Scotland duty. It's a very friendly last tournament. Uh, Everton are ready to kick off. Let's get cracked in game two. And it's an Everton later party thistle. Terrific cross from the right hand side, straight in the middle of Sean Reynolds. As I just heard over the tonneye, got a terrific header on it, beat the keeper. Great start for the home team. Um, we've reached half time, it's still one up Thistle, it's actually a really good game to watch. Uh, Jackie McNamara has obviously got them well drowned in short, sharp, quick passing. I thought that against uh, Celtic yesterday, but now that I've seen it against Everton as well, I'm well impressed with what he's doing. Um, good luck to him, I hope that works for him in the first division. It's entertaining to watch and hope it's successful. Right, two teams are back out, we're ready to go for the second half. Hopefully Thistle can continue the way they played in the first half and maybe beat Everton and lift a trophy in their own uh, stadium. That'd be good. So let's see how it goes. In the early in the second half, is a penalty to part of Thistle. Another good move has eventually ended with uh, an upending in the box, so let's see if they make it us. That's a number eight. He's the one that's going to take it. He's up. I said to keep it the wrong way. 2 0. Sean Reynolds again then. Good stuff. That's one hand in the trophy with that, so I think. Unless Everton can lift something. Not to get complacent is uh, the key for this one, isn't it? Okay, maybe not. Everton have just pulled one back. 2 1 now. Plenty of time in the second half to go. Game on. 
my last it long. Three went to this on it. <laughs> Another of them moved in the left hand side. Of about a jink and work the one in the players. Decent ball across. And uh, the number three, I think it was further in the bottom corner, away out of the reach of the keeper. It was the number three, Stuart Tumbi. <laughs> Fair enough, good answer to uh, concede the goal. That was a lucky, that was nearly a fourth. Cracking volley on the edge of the box. Cut the keeper out and felt an earth as a word and knocked it into the net. He was offside, unfortunately. It's great stuff to watch, you know. Ever, I've had the ball in the net on all twice, both of them offside. And then we're going to get a, a host of substitutions, so hopefully that will not affect the game too badly, because this is entertaining. I'm enjoying this. And a full time whistle goes, part of this all 1 3 1 to win the cup, and it's about to be presented after the game, so. We're standing in, watch that, may as well. Everton finished second, Celtic finished third, and Airdrie are just last. The trophy appears for some kind of plaque thing. And part of this will just be presented with it. So, again, congratulations to them. Well deserved over the two days from what I've seen. Played really well, both games and beat two decent development teams, I think. The Celtic certainly showed today what they're capable of. Everton, I never really seen them yesterday, unfortunately, but they looked a decent outfit today, and part of this will just had to play really well to beat them. So, well deserved, and I've got to say, good luck to part of this in the coming season. If you play like that, they're well worth watching. And, uh, Maybe this is a good time to point out that when we've got a week off because we're away in Philadelphia on August 11th, part of this are home to Falkirk. And I remember Falkirk playing pretty decent football yesterday, last season as well. So, a part of this are Falkirk game, let's go, be worth getting along here if you've got nothing better to do that weekend. So I think, is, is that what I might do? Should be good one. Anyway. Congratulations to Hassel, take it home, here we go. Good evening from Celtic Park. It's the 24th of July, it's been two months and 11 days since we were last year. And the day we've seen us raise the SPL trophy. And then we're back for the start of a new season. And that's our uh, first friendly of two this week as we take on Norwich City. We've paid the favour for the Adam Drury testimonial at the end of last season. A uh, bit of a second string team today. We've got Zaleska in goal. As again, he's a left back, that's a bit more normal. Uh, Rognar, Kelvin Wilson. Lustig can play the back four. The midfield four are Philip Twardzik. That's Philip, not Patrick. Uh, Dylan McGeer, Paddy McCourt, and Chris Commons. Although it's debatable because we've also got Georges Samaras and Daryl Murphy, so we can be playing 4 5 1, 4 3 3, something in between. Who knows, we're eight men see. Bench is a bit stronger. We've got the likes of uh, Foster. Gary Hooper, Victor Wanyama, Mo Bangura, Adam Matthews, and James Forrest. And uh, if you can hear the music jumping about in the background, that's because my memory is failing badly tonight. I keep reading it until I and try to remember it, and it's just not working. Don't worry, I'm sure we'll get into the swing of things when the season gets going properly. Uh, it's another pre season friendly, so the result doesn't matter, but we really need to start packing up performances now. The Champions League is uh, just a week away, eight days to precise. Uh, our opponents are finishing their setting leg tonight. That's uh, Reykjavik if they come in 8-0. Or more likely, HCK Helsinki. And they'll be here next week, Wednesday. So it's uh, pretty close now. So we've only got this game and then uh, Saturday's friendly against Inter Milan to get going. 
Because let's face it, Europe's uh, it's all about this year with the demise of Rangers. European nights are about the only decent night we're going to get for a cracking atmosphere in here. Although I'm sure the Green Brigade will uh, be back on form as usual as the season progresses to take us hopefully into another title. But that's a long way away yet. This is going to be a feature this season where you get to pick your top three songs that you want to play here. Something along the lines of pick one yourself, pick a Celtic song, pick some sort of connection song, I think. Anyway, it's uh, the first one up of the night. Zombie Nation. It's a subtle wee dig that there is across the city. <laughs> We're also getting three little birds with Bob Marrow and the Mailers and the Wally Mailers song. So, I don't know what to make of this. If it gets the fans involved and keeps the people happy, fine. It's not as if we haven't been using it to our own uh, advantage recently. The last season we did get Joe McKenna's song playing here. Uh, I know the, the Shirt of Lingering Boys say get uh, the, the Sun Smells Too Loud by Mogwai. This is, of course, uh, Human Torpedo's background music. So, can't really fault this uh, latest craze of getting the, the fans to pack the music. If it gets people on the ground there, well, great. But there's nothing here for them today. When they're in the ground there, like, other than watch training. But then they would expect people to listen to other podcasts, wouldn't they? Don't worry. Something to look out for tonight. Norris City, number six, Stephen Whitaker. Uh, his name got read out and he's already had the appropriate response. Should have won the last. <laughs> Here come the teams now, George is so nice as well, isn't it? Assuming he's captain for the night, this is his first game back as well. Last time I seen him, he was scoring against the other 80 Euros. <laughs> Running about way here, the song's finished and we've still not even done a huddle yet. Still get it, boys. Hey, right, now there's a huddle. <laughs> Not it's the kick off. Let's get cracking. Safe go. Uh, I've played 20 minutes and that's enough for Stephen Whitaker. He's decided to sit in the track. I don't know if he's maybe got a wee knock, but I thought so he just had to kill him also in a couple of seconds ago. Uh, Stevie walked away apparently. It's not doing much walking at the moment, Major. You kind of control the game, to be honest. There's a few passengers out there, though. The Rodgers look pretty confident. Most things look pretty confident once I worked out who it was. <laughs> He's had a haircut and a shave and everything. He just looks like a different guy entirely. Um, Paddy's doing all right in midfield. Nothing spectacular for him. He's been kind of playing that deep role, so not really expecting much uh, classic party from him today. Walsh has been a worry, as he's been quiet. Sammy is just back and he's looking a bit like Sammy already, to be honest. McGeeck's kind of, he's, well, he's got two men marking him, which doesn't make life easy for him. Thomas has been fairly quiet. It's been interesting at times, he's far well, running at least. The workers now uh, walking off the pitch, so he'll probably come back on at some point. Although they are indicating there's going to be a substitution made. Substitution for Norwich City, playing off the number six. Steve Yep, workers are off, 20 minutes, and away. 
Number three for one, and we make sure he's actually allowed to play for Norwich. That's still not actually been cleared up properly yet. He's got a temporary clearance. And anyway, back to the game. First decent chance. Thomas got a bit of space, cracked it from the box, it took a deflection, it looked as if it was looking in, and the keeper got a hand to it, tipped it over. So it's a corner now, which Thomas is going to take. Whoops, and Norwich defence get it clear a bit. Ronya tries to do some kind of fancy flick. McGuess went in and nicked it back. Back out to Commons, he's got a bit of space. He whips it in again. Murphy, oh, off the bar! Sorry, it wasn't Murphy, it was Lustig. Lustig with a header, whooping header. Can't tell the bar went over. And 35 minutes into the game, Kelvin Wilson's away off, and Victor Wanyama is on. That's probably improved the team, to be honest. Wilson's made too many mistakes today already. Get him with the other three in the back, have they made, made any, so... Sorry, Kelvin's not quite good at the moment. Hopefully I'll either get it or... they'll get it. Could do with sorting it up front now, as well. Because there's no real end up there. Murphy's not getting any pace. Not really getting any head in the ball, not getting any strength. Not convinced, unfortunately. With Bangura and Hooper on the bench. There's other possibilities. Maybe time to see Bangura, actually. Another good move for Celtic there. Dalmo Gekko went a good run. Played a crying ball through to Sammy, who probably took it a wee bit wide, under a good bit of pressure with the defence. I don't think he could do is hit it across the face of goal. It must have hit somebody, mind you, because it's a corner. Samaras is unfortunately lying in the penalty area now, though. Holding his leg. She's going to get a bad treatment now. I don't know if it went over it and awkwardly or collided with an Orange player or what, but. He helped his feet. Looks like he's probably alright. Of course, he's ready to get half because he's not allowed to be on for a corner now. That's unfortunate. So, Commons with a corner. Yeah, well, it's also his walk to the right, so it's good. It's a deep one. Too deep. Drogna got it, but can only hit it out. And Samaras gets back on. Another bad treatment for Celtic boy, this time it's Zaluska. So I'm not sure what exactly what's up, but he got a bit of a bang or a challenge. He's tipped it away. The referee blew for a free kick. Certainly a bit of concern about this one. Remember the Green Brigade have got a banner out that's basically a guy getting turned into a knuckle dragger and then ending up in the grave and then coming back as a zombie and getting shot. <laughs> I can't quite see what's in the gravestone, but I can probably guess. <laughs> it does look like a familiar crest of a football club. Sing a song about the Huns being zombies and we are the champions. <laughs> Complete with actions. <laughs> Didn't have a time with his Oscar, unfortunately. And I think Fraser Forster's getting ready to come on. Indeed he is. That's a worry.
There's always because of its feet, but... There's a Forster is strapped and ready to go. My guess is, we're we'll going to take a risk with the Oscar, but I hope that's all it is. He must have got a head though, he's got a bandage on. But he's walking off, so. I'm assuming he's probably going to be alright. Probably got a bang in the head, didn't just, what, stitches or something like that. And no point in asking it, so hopefully he'll be okay. In fact, at least be on the bench against. Uh, well, let's face it, it's Helsinki, isn't it? Anyway, Fraser Forster is going to take the free kick. A few minutes added on, which we're into now. I don't think we've quite indicated how much yet. In fact, the officials just got the board out now. And we're getting three minutes added on. There's been a few knocks, so I'm not really surprised. Ah, that's half time. So, no, no. Had a couple of decent chances, but keeper's been equal to them. No, they've had a couple of chances himself. We've had two subs already. I'm hoping. Nothing serious for either of those. And hopefully, it'll go over to in the second half. Right, we're getting highlights of uh, some games Celtic played in 1967. Yeah, I'm trying to jump up for uh, the game on Saturday. wonder how it'll finish. Oh, penalty in it. Looked like a dive to me. Yeah, I see if Ronnie Sampson can save it. Ah, I sent him a wrong way. Yes, Tam Game was equalised. Right, can we get a one on there? That's the question. Thanks, Tam Game, by the way. Who said the revolt? Stop calling her. Careful. See if we can do it. Tell you what, it's not for wanting to try and get your ass one on here. Bottom, there go. Yeah, Stevie Chalmers, don't go. Stuck his foot out as well, but Mordek had a shot. Two ones, Yellick. Guy more left. I don't know what I do, I'm going to hang on, is there? We're not all of them. Full type. Celtic 2, I don't want 1. 1967, huh? Well, I'm going to applaud the video, I'm going to applaud the Razor Foster running it. Can we help you get a trophy now? To make themselves the number one team in Europe. On the loft, Celtic are European champions, 1967. <laughs> Never to be underestimated that feat. Fantastic. Jokes right, yeah, teams are back here for the second half. Doesn't look like there's any Celtic changes. <laughs> No, no sound of changes. I've been off the first half, so. As you will. Then we'll get them in the second half, because we're kicking off. And hopefully, we'll see a couple of subs later on. I would like to see Bangura get a run at some point. No, Hooper, I know what he can do, so. Keep him for bigger games. But there's, there's changes to be made on. Anyway, under my game. Yeah! Right, we've had an hour. Carol Murphy's going to have what's going on. And I think James Forrest, the other one that's getting ready to come on. As indeed for Dylan McGear. Good to get down and out. Half an hour at Forest Newmore, see what they can do for me. 
just tap the balance of this game in our favour. I actually got a free kick, you know. Samaras was filled, that's a great mate subs. Commons is over a free kick now. It's not really made it to anybody, though. Forrest gets his first touch of the game. Well, oh, this is chance for Celtic or Sammy get played in. Tried to chip the keeper, but managed to chip the crossbar as well. And it threw it for the net. Hey, well, it's a good effort to get a two inch chance when they're all full. Two subs do it. Chris Commons has gone off. And Van Gura's coming on. And the other sub of the night is George Samaras for Adam Matthews. And Samaras is heading for Paddy McCourt to hand over the handband. So it's Captain Paddy now. That's a good sword. 68 minutes at a summer last night. That's almost 70 given the first half ran over. So, good welcome back for him. He's done alright tonight. 20 minutes to see uh, Van Gogh and Matthews can put in. And 20 minutes of Paddy McCourt, captain and Celtic. Proud moment for him, I think. This is pretty much about the two us slagging off a Jock Steen stand for no joining in. They have finally started. Took about three or four attempts, but we got them on. And we've got a corner for him. It's not it's get clear. Starless is right, this might be enough to reach draw. This game's rather dying a death, I'm afraid. Got a minutes left. It's pretty bad error or something in the last couple of minutes for a, a goal to come. No, this has been pretty solid at the back tonight. Closed down well. Closed down quickly as well. The closing is down further for a lot of park actually. If anybody's going to score, it might be them. That was a good ball in, and it's well blocked, and a good save. Offside, but it's been followed in eventually, the number nine. Pulled offside to me, pulled offside when the shot came in. Where's the Gavin? <laughs> Grant Holt. <laughs> so I go to the death, and we're going to slump in all defeat. We just have to have then killer up front. I don't know if we're the first choice team, so. One of those games you'll never show it to make it. Good things and bad things in it. One in lack of depth or quality. Good on it for Sammy, good on it for a couple of boys. A minute left. Really? We can't get him on it. Going to the way again. The old bomb is again, but Norwich going back again. And there's three minutes added on. The referee has indicated that there will be a minimum of three minutes added. I don't see why you add on so many minutes in a friendly, you don't usually. Well, that is full time. 
Chris Collins gets one in the match, but you need one in a friendly. And we lose one now in Orich. Nah, that was a good warm up, I suppose. Well, these fans have made the trap, getting applauded now. The good value, we're doing a couple of huddles. I'm, I'm fairly sure they were singing the Don't Tell My Court song at one point. I suppose there's so much bond in there when we went in, so it's so always good. Um, Way to score in the Champions League qualifying round, HTK Helsinki. Have a away goal? That might be crucial. Doubt that, but it might be, you never know. Thank you, Vic. Might score eight. It'll be each and get the big goals. Right. Anyway. It's time to go home and return a paradise for Coldplay. I'm sure that'll annoy Tony Hamilton if he doesn't like Coldplay. However, hell hell. So there you are. Not my best work, I must admit. But just like the team, it's good to get these games under the belt to blow away the cobwebs. Up next, it's Inter Milan at Paradise on Saturday, before it's time to get serious with the visit of HJK Helsinki in our first leg third round qualifier for the Champions League. So we're getting very real very quickly. Before I finish up, I'd like to pass on my condolences to the family of Joe McBride. There's not many former Celtic players that I've had the privilege to talk to, but Joe was one of the few. I met him in San Francisco at the Celtic convention there in 2010, and I could have listened to the stories forever. He made me feel more than welcome at my first convention when I was still finding my feet over there and I'll never forget that. Rest in peace, Joe. Anyway, if you're listening to this, I'm sure you're picking up all the other great podcasts in Hell Hell Media. Already this week we've had Beyond the Waves, Carlick Shamrock and two from the temporary stand as the boys ramp up ready for the new season. There's been a few specials as well through the summer that have kept us all going and I'm sure you'll agree it's good to be back. But that's me for another part of the support. Hell Hell, talk to you all next week. Change. And we're gonna keep the faith that we'll do it.